Hi, welcome to Kyridian. I've recently been gaining an interest in sharks because of their mere size, beauty, strength, diversity, and coolness. Just look at them. I have seen the beast in flesh in various aquariums including the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California, which actually once had a great white shark exhibit. But these exhibits were short-lived and the sharks lived from 11 days to 5 months in the aquarium. Other great white sharks, such as the one taken to an aquarium in Okinawa, Japan, died 3 days after. So great white sharks aren't the best creature to bring to aquariums. Be that as it may, I thought that I should make a video on the basking shark, a noble and gigantic creature, and one commonly misidentified for globsters or supposedly decomposing plesiosaurs, also known as the elephant shark, the bone shark, and the sunfish. After the whale shark, the basking shark is the second largest living shark, about the length of a double-decker bus. I'd like to give a quick introduction to sharks to refresh your memory. Sharks are cartilaginous fish related to rays and sawfish, characterized by a cartilaginous skeleton, 5 to 7 gill slits, and pectoral fins. The earliest known sharks date back to more than 420 million years ago. Since then, sharks have diversified to almost over 500 species, ranging from the dwarf lantern shark, half a feet long, to the whale shark, the largest fish in the world, at around 40 feet. Some interesting sharks include the bull shark, tiger shark, and the famous hammerhead shark, as well as the cookie cutter shark. Sharks tend to have dermal denticles as their covering that protects their skin from damage and parasites, as well as to improving their fluid dynamics. Despite their appearance, many shark species are rapidly declining and are threatened by human activities. Along with the whale shark and megamouth shark, the basking shark is one of the three plankton-eating shark species, or planktivores. Planktivores are a group of aquatic animals that feed on plankton, including zooplankton and phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are usually photosynthetic, one-celled organisms. They are found near the surface of the water. And why? Because they need light energy for photosynthetic processes. They provide most of the oxygen in the water and provide a large amount of food for other creatures in the water column. Zooplankton are heterotrophic plankton, animals which ingest nutrients as opposed to producing it via chemical reactions. Planktivores ingest one or both types of plankton. Titanichthys, which I will introduce quickly, was the first huge vertebrate inhabiting the open sea, or pelagic planktivore, and lived similar to the basking shark, whale shark, or megamouth shark. Titanichthys was a giant marine placoderm from shallow seas of the late Demonian of Morocco, Africa, eastern North America, and possibly Europe. Their build was similar to the famous Donctheosteus. It had small, ineffective mouth plates that didn't have a sharp edge. Scientists believe that it was a filter feeder to swallow small anchovy-like fish or zooplankton. So history also has planktivores forgotten by time. Most fish are planktivores during part of their life cycles, usually when they are larvae. So back to the basking shark. Adults reach an average around 26 feet in length and weigh almost 5 tons. They have a cavernous jaw up to 3 feet in width. They grow on average 1.3 feet per year, which is relatively slow. Their color is grayish brown, dark brown, and even black. They are mottled, having spots or blotches of different colors. They have textured skin covered in placoid scales called dermal denticles and dark mucus layers, a pointed snout, and a caudal triangular dorsal fin. Sometimes they are scarred by lamprey or cookie cutter sharks, which we will cover in another episode. Lampreys in a nutshell are jawless fish characterized by their tooth funnel-like sucking mouth, which they use to function as parasites and suck blood at least in the well-known species. Meanwhile, cookie cutter sharks are only 16.5 to 22 inches in length, but don't let their size deceive you because they have a feeding habit of gouging round plugs as if cut out with a cookie cutter out of larger animals. Cookie cutter shark plugs have been found on submarines and undersea cables. During the 1970s, many US Navy submarines were chomped on by cookie cutter sharks. 
which caused the sound transmitting oil to leak and impair navigation. Basking sharks are threatened by these two creatures, lampreys and cookie cutter sharks. Their range extends throughout the world in warm to cold temperate latitudes, yet absent from the tropics. Its name is derived from the fact that it feeds at the surface, basking in the warmer water there. They appear to be soaking up the sun's warmth. Anatomically, it is adapted for filter feeding, with a greatly enlarged mouth and highly developed gill rakers, a special organ they use for feeding. They feed passively, letting water flow in while swimming. Its snout is conical, and its five gill slits extend around the top and bottom of its head. They have thousands of bristles on the gill slits, each measuring about 4 to 5 inches in length. Similar to baleen in a filter feeding whale, the gill rakers, dark and bristle like, are used to catch plankton as water filters through the mouth and over the gills. Basking sharks shed them continually. They have tiny eyes with poor eyesight, adapted for object avoidance and light level detection, and very small teeth, usually 100 to 150 per row which are actually the most of any shark species on Earth. Their teeth are 0.20 to 0.24 inches in length. They have a single conical cusp, curved backwards and hooked, and are the same on both the lower and upper jaw. Its brain is small, around 10 centimeters long, thus they live mostly passively. They have been shown from satellite tracking to overwinter, or wait out the winter season in both continental shelves less than 660 feet, and deeper waters up to 3,000 feet. They make vertical movements consistent with feeding on overwintering zooplankton. They move thousands of miles during the summer and winter, often along ocean fronts. Zooplankton feed on phytoplankton, and in turn basking sharks migrate to feed on the rich zooplankton patches. They may use olfactory cues to detect dimethyl sulfide, released by phytoplankton when they are graced on by zooplankton. They undertake journeys to aid reproduction. Basking sharks are highly migratory, though they don't have strict migration routes. Basking sharks feed at surprisingly slow and sluggish speeds of 2 to 4 miles per hour. Despite being slow and large, they can breach, jumping entirely off the water. Scientists believe this is to dislodge parasites or commensals, remoras and sea lampreys, form part of a courtship display, or create a loud noise to communicate with other sharks. Despite their cover, the rule of don't judge a book by its cover applies here because they aren't aggressive and are harmless to humans. Commercially, the basking shark is important as a source of food, shark fin, animal feed, and shark liver oil, called squalene, for cosmetics, perfumes, and lubricants. Because of this, overexploitation has reduced basking shark populations to the point where some have disappeared and others need protection. This oil was once used in lamps, their flesh is used for food and fish meal, and their hide is used for leather. Their large livers make one-fourth to one-third of their body weight and are vitamin rich. From a four-ton, 27-foot-long basket shark, a fisherman will get one ton of meat and 100 gallons of oil. A single shark may yield between 750 to 1500 liters of oil. They are coastal pelagic sharks found worldwide in boreal to warm temperate waters. They live around the continental shelf and occasionally enter brackish waters, or waters with properties in between seawater and freshwater. Similarly, they sometimes enter estuaries and bays. They are found from the surface down to 3,000 feet. Basking sharks prefer temperatures of 46.4 to 58.1 degrees Fahrenheit, but occasionally cross the warm waters of the equator. The largest basking shark's length was 40.3 feet and weighed 16 tons. Some scientists claim that the largest specimens reach up to 45 feet in length. Some specimens surpass 30 to 33 feet. But after years of large-scale fishing, specimens of this size have become rare. They are usually mistaken for grey white sharks, and this is because of their length, yet they are slightly larger, ranging from 25 to 40 feet, while the grey white sharks are around 20 feet in length. 
they can form sex segregated shows, usually three to four, or even a hundred. Their social behavior is for courtship. They face predators such as killer whales, basking sharks eat by ramming or swimming forwards with their mouths open and filtering zooplankton, small crustaceans, fish eggs, small fish, barnacles, and invertebrate larvae. A 16 feet long basking shark has been calculated to filter up to 450 tons per hour, swimming at a speed of 2.8 feet per second. They filter around 1,500 to 2,000 tons of water every hour while filter feeding, or 4 million pounds. Every hour, a 22 foot long basking shark burns up an estimated 664 calories. They feed preferentially in zooplankton patches dominated by small planktonic crustaceans called calanoid copepods, 1700 individuals per cubic meter of water. They rely on the water they push through their gills by swimming. Scientists believe that the basking shark is oviviparous, producing young through eggs hatched within the body of the parent. This can be seen in some snakes. Gestation spans over one to three years. For those who don't know what gestation is, it's the period of development between conception and birth. Mating occurs in early summer and birthing in late summer, following the females' movement into shallow waters. They mate via internal fertilization, and females give birth to live young. They give birth to the biggest babies of any fish, made up of few large babies between 5 to 6 feet in length. Basking sharks grow very slowly. Researchers believe that they use an embryonic nutrition method known as obophagy, in which an embryo feeds on unfertilized eggs or other embryos within the uterus. Females reach sexual maturity when they are between 12 to 16 years old. Maturity occurs between the ages of 6 and 13, at a length of 15 to 20 feet. They reproduce every 2 to 4 years. They live for around 20 to even 100 years. Gender can be identified by the males having two claspers under the anal fins. Claspers are a pair of appendages under the abdomen of a male shark used to hold a female during copulation. Claspers aren't the same as lampreys, so if you are identifying a basking shark, know this fact. They are an endangered species and highly vulnerable to exploitation. Almost 100,000 basking sharks have been caught throughout the years. Scientists are currently concerned about the threat of microplastics. Similarly, climate change threatens basking sharks as they affect the distribution of prey. Globster corpses identified as sea serpents or plesiosaurs are identified as likely to be decomposing basking sharks. For example, the Stronsei Beast and Suiyomaru cases. The Suiyomaru was discovered by fishermen in 1977, initially believed to be a decomposing plesiosaur. The Stronsei Beast was a globster, or large carcass, that washed the shore on the island of Stronsei, and it measured an astounding 55 feet in length, and was thought to be a sea serpent. The truth is that it must have been around 36 feet long, according to anatomist Sir Everard Holm, and is more a case of misidentification of a decomposing basking shark, as basking sharks can take on a plesiosaur-like appearance during decomposition. Many ancient tales of sea monsters were mistaken for basking sharks. These have been described in various mythologies, like the Leviathan, Skyla, and Jormungandr. If you ever get to see one, don't get too close because they have extremely rough skin in the form of dermal denticles. To help conserve basking sharks, recycle your waste and cut any plastic to prevent entanglement. Do not discard plastics, nylon fishing line, and other trash at sea. When observing them underwater, maintain a distance of at least 12 feet. You can report your basking shark sightings to your local wildlife trust. Give them space if you meet them out on the water. Avoid propeller injuries by switching your boat to neutral. If you spot one on a jet ski, maintain a distance of at least 300 feet and do not approach any closer. You should never touch the shark. All sharks deserve our respect and we must do our best to conserve them. In a nutshell, we have talked about sharks, the basking shark's lifestyle, behavior, 
and description, as well as the many cases of misidentification. And with that, thank you for watching, and save the sharks. This is Ankairidi, see you next time.